Hi, I'm Owen Fitzpatrick, co-author of the book, How to Take Charge of Your Life with Dr. Richard Bandler and Les Uroberti. And what I want to do in this video is I want to talk to you about how to maintain change once you've done it. So how do you maintain the momentum of change? Uh, it's one of the questions I got asked uh, to do a video on in terms of a Facebook survey I did. And so in this particular video, I want to share with you what are the, the most important principles that you need to remember and you need to practice or use in order for you to maintain change. I'm also going to incorporate something else into this video that I was asked for, which is how to be able to deal with the guilt that, for example, might come from a family when you change, right? And, and that, kind of, uh, that kind of situation and stuff like that. So we'll talk about that as well. But let's talk, first of all, about the things you need to do to maintain change. Well, first of all, what's the problem with change? On my YouTube channel, you'll find another video where I talk about habits, how to build a new habit and stuff like that. And I highly recommend you check it out. It's one of those like, you know, uh, uh, drawing type videos with my voice in the background and stuff like that. But it's very useful in terms of being able to make changes. So the problem isn't often that we don't know how to make changes. The problem is making sure that those are long lasting changes. So again, what are the things you need to do? Well, the first thing I like to suggest to people, and this really comes about because the main problems people have is that they'll typically go, well, I've got my New Year's resolution. And they know that by January the 9th, New Year's resolution is a loser year resolution because it's not going to happen. A lot of times other people will go on Lent. Even people that don't even believe in God will go in Lent because as they tell me, they believe in Lent. And they'll say, right, for 40 days, I'm going to stay off chocolate, but not this type of chocolate, just that type of chocolate. And they'll have all these conditions. But at the end of the day, then... Easter Sunday comes and they gorge, and then they're off everything that they were off. Yeah, something like that. But the point is, is that there's always a time limit for something. So how do you start to make sure that you build a regular, continuous momentum, which ensures that you keep change going? Here's how we're going to answer that. First, discipline. The difference between motivation and discipline is motivation is when you build yourself up, and you go, need to get out of bed, I need to get out of bed. Oh, if I don't get out of bed, I'll be in trouble. I love to get out of bed because if I do get out of bed, this is great. And you start to use all that you can to create the right kinds of feelings so you can feel motivated enough to take the action to get out of bed, for example. Discipline is when you do it without necessarily needing this continuous reinforcement or feeling. So the difference between motivation and discipline is motivation is getting yourself g'd up. Motiva uh, discipline, on the other hand, is doing it because it's just part of your normal routine. So you're doing it regardless. And discipline is your ability to be able to create a system uh, where you're willing yourself to do whatever it is you need to do without even question. So for example, let's say at the end of a hard day's uh, work, you come home and uh, you're trying to motivate yourself to go to the gym. It's going to be near impossible for you to do so because you'll have, oh, I'm tired, but I should go to the gym. I'd like to go to the gym, but I don't feel it. Whereas discipline is you go to the gym regardless. I mean, there's no question. You, you don't open it up for discussion. In order to build discipline, you need to, from the very beginning, be very clear over exactly how worth it this is. So you motivate yourself massively, and then you s sort out and design exactly what you're going to do. So even some of the ideas I'm about to suggest connect in and feed into discipline. But discipline means you're very clear over exactly what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and you're prepared for any chance uh, you know, that you might not feel like doing it, but you do it regardless. So you don't need to feel like doing it in order to do it. So whatever the change is, You've decided to make it, you know the positive benefits, you know how it'll impact you long term, and that's it, no question. Nothing will stop you from engaging in it, okay? And that's the way you need to think about it. This is not something that's up for discussion. It's the way it's going to be. And the more that you practice discipline, the more you become more disciplined, the more easy it is for you to be able to maintain that. The second thing after discipline, which will help with discipline, is what we call scheduling. Scheduling is one of the most underrated yet most powerful forms of implementing a continuous change. You need to make sure that you've scheduled into your life whatever the change is. So whatever changes you've made, you need to make them a natural part of what you do. So you understand when are you going to implement this new behavior or this new change, and you make sure you schedule it on a regular basis. A lot of research out there shows that when people are asked to do something, um, even if they're motivated to do it, they're much less likely to do it, but if they schedule it in and put it and say, I'm going to do it at this specific time in this specific day, 
they're much more significantly likely to do it. So it's vital that you begin to start to schedule in in the future, over this week, over the next week, over the next few months, over the next few years, when are you going to do it? And make sure it becomes something that is a natural part of your routine, a natural part of your schedule. When it becomes that, then again, it becomes easier to become a discipline and it means that you're much more likely to engage in it as well. The third thing after discipline and schedule is to make sure that you're preparing and planning for the potential challenges. There's gonna be challenges that come your way. There's gonna be things that get in your way and try to stop you from being able to do it. And it's critical when you deal with those challenges that you're prepared for it. So you know, for example, if you wanna change your behavior, you know that there'll be time that if you're st stopping eating you know, biscuits, your favorite kind of cookies, and you're like, oh, I love those cookies. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And you know that if you've given up those cookies or if you wanna to tone down those cookies, you know there'll be time where those cookies are right there in front of you and they're going, come on, eat me, I'm so hungry, you're, you're so hungry, I taste so good, I know you know I taste so good. And you're like, look at the cookies, they're looking at you. And you know that's gonna happen, so you need to have a strategy in place that when that happens, you're able to maintain your discipline, you're able to handle the cravings or handle whatever happens. A lot of times people go, I'm gonna do this, and all of a sudden something happens, they go, oh, I didn't expect it. You knew it was gonna happen. You know there's going to be challenges along the way for you to maintain this. You know there's going to be challenges that try to stop the momentum from happening. So because you know that, plan for them. Prepare for them. And know what are you going to do when they arise. How will you handle the cookie cravings? What will you do when you're tired at the end of the day instead of going, oh, I can't believe it, I'm tired at the end of a long, hard day's work. Wow, now I don't feel like exercising. If only I knew that. You knew it. Don't lie to yourself. So plan ahead of time and go, okay, if this happens, here's how I'm gonna deal with it. Here's how I'm gonna react to it. By planning that, by putting as part of a schedule and discipline yourself to do it, you're much more likely to be able to handle that. And this is also something that connects in with handling, I suppose, the guilt that sometimes can arise as a result of changing. You see, a lot of times people don't like change. People like to position you in a certain way. So if you're in a family or you've got friends, and you want to make a change in your life. Some people will suggest dump your friends if they're not like completely on board with it. I'm not a fan of that. I think it's okay to have people that aren't the same as you in your life and don't have the most wonderfully positive attitude. I do believe you should surround yourself with as much positive people as possible, for sure. But I believe you need all types of people in your life to give you a real well-grounded life. And so what I believe is that to handle the guilt that might arise when you're changing and, and, and family don't like it or friends don't like it, you need to be able to recognize that and adapt to that and be flexible for that and plan for that and figure out how can I make sure I'm communicating with them that makes them feel okay. Because a lot of times, think about it, why, is a family, why does a family have a problem over you changing? A lot of times it is because they're scared. They're scared over the differences or the changes that might happen as a result of the changes in the relationship. Because if you change, will that affect the relationship? They like having you predictable. They, they like knowing that they sometimes, unfortunately, have control and other times it's they, 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 they just like to know that their relationship with you is stable. And so any communication you can as you make these changes, when you're talking to your family or friends, that you can let them know that everything's the same. So you can communicate with them the same way. You can make them feel the same. You can spend maybe a little, little extra time giving them the sense and the feeling that everything's okay and that the relationship's okay and that the connection is still okay. That's much more likely to make them feel okay about the whole situation. Also, bring them on board for it. You know, Share with them you know, some of the, the ways that they've influenced you and, 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 and in a way, help them embrace the, this new you that you're, you're, you're becoming and that you're enjoying and that you're experiencing. Let them in on it. Let them be a part of it um, a lot of times. And, and worst case scenario, if they resist and relent and they keep attacking, allow yourself to be okay no matter what. Because again, remind yourself that this isn't coming from hate. It's not coming from believing that you're an idiot. A lot of times it's coming from them feeling scared. And once you know that, then it changes the way you feel about the negativity that comes your way and, and you, you get yourself to the point that you, you certainly don't feel guilty. Because again, your job is to be the best you you can be. And the more that you can be the best you you can be, the more you can do that, the more that you can make a positive difference to the people in your life. So that's certainly something uh, worth considering and, 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 and worth feeling good about. 
Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is uh, there's, there's two more ideas. So you've got, first of all, discipline. Then you've got scheduling it and making sure that you've got the schedule in the right way. You've got planning for challenges. You've got handling issues like guilt about change and all that sort of stuff. Um, the next thing is to make sure that you're creating milestones. And that means being able to break down any you know, uh, new behavior you're engaging in and giving yourself on occasion rewards for new behavior. So over the course of a new change, to keep the momentum, it's a good idea to give yourself sort of goals and, and points. If you're losing weight or if you're becoming a healthy eater or whatever, then you're starting to see yourself uh, reaching certain milestones, certain sub goals, and by doing so, giving yourself rewards then, which in turn makes you feel more motivated. We're heavily motivated when we feel we're making progress. So give yourself the opportunity to see the progress you're making and that will keep you driving forward, keep you moving forward and keep you feeling um, a massive amount of momentum for your motivation. And then lastly, identify with it. So begin to see yourself as the kind of person who is doing it. This is the real trick towards long-term change. You need to stop thinking, I'm going on a diet and see yourself as a healthy eater. Stop seeing yourself as going on an exercise regime and see yourself as a healthy and fit person that works out. And begin to become that person. Begin to see that that's the kind of person you can become. The more that you see yourself as that kind of person, the more likely you are to act in that way. Cognitive dissonance is a psychological term which explores this conflict that exists in our mind. A lot of times when our identity and our behavior is in conflict. So when we believe we're a certain type of person and we have a different behavior, either the behavior changes to fit the identity or the identity changes to fit the behavior. So in this case, the more you believe and see yourself as the kind of person you want to be and you think of yourself like that, then the new change that you're making becomes automated and starts to become a natural way of the, the, the natural part of the way in which you are. So again, make sure you identify with it. So in summary, discipline yourself. Focus on discipline rather than just motivation and see it as something that's just, there's no question this is happening, right? Schedule it in. Make sure you're scheduling and planning for the changes in your future. Be prepared and plan for any of the challenges or obstacles you might face along the way and what you're gonna do when you deal with them, including the change of the way people perceive you or the guilt that, you, that might be there as a result of changing you know, for people that are closest to you and understanding where that comes from, being able to be caring with the people and allowing yourself to realize that they're not doing it from a bad place, it's just fear most of the time, be able to help them feel better as a result of that. Um, also making sure that you're building milestones into your goals so that you've different ways of plotting it to, to keep the momentum going. And last but not least, identifying with it, creating an identity of who you want to be because the more that you become the kind of person that does this, the more it becomes effortless and you will continue to enjoy the momentum of change such that it'll then become a natural part of the way in which you are. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found this valuable. Um, I really think these insights are really, really um, powerful and if you implement them, you'll find yourself being able to maintain any momentum for any form of change that you choose to make in your life. For now, I'm Owen Fitzpatrick. Go out into the world. Let the world impact you. Make sure that you impact the world. And as ever, be a legend in your own lunchbox. Thanks for watching.